So we're going to talk about gases in this chapter. Some properties of gases that they uniformly fill any container and they exert pressure on the surroundings. Um, we'll talk about what pressure is. So there's tons of collisions that occur um, with the walls of the container. If a gas is in a cylinder, as it collides with the walls, it exerts pressure on that container. Atmospheric pressure is the pressure that's exerted on us by the gases that are in the atmosphere, and it would represent a total. Uh, atmospheric pressure can change, as you know, like with changes in weather. So pressure is known as force per area, and the SI unit of pressure is called a pascal, and a pascal is one newton of force over a meter squared area. So this is an SI unit. This actually ends up being a really low amount of pressure. Um, one standard atmosphere pressure, which is basically what it is outside most of the time, it varies a little bit, goes up and down a little bit, is 101,325 pascals or 101.325 kPa kilopascals. These units of pressure that are given here all are equivalent to one atmosphere, and we use this abbreviation for atmospheres. If you are a scuba diver, you would use atmospheres, if, um, and we use it a lot in chemistry also. This is used um, if you're using a barometer to measure, and these two things, notice the number is the same. These are equivalent, equivalent units. You could substitute millimeters, mercury, or tor. So why millimeters and mercury? Why is pressure a height? Um, that has to do with how pressure is measured. This is called a barometer. And a barometer was created by a guy named Torricelli, hence the use of tor uh, for a unit. If the pressure is really low in the atmosphere, then the column of mercury will drop down further. Okay, so higher pressure will be higher column. It's like that mercury is pushed up and into that tube. Okay, a different way to measure gas pressure, you certainly use something like this, a manometer, if you want to check the pressure in your car, tires or something. And here's another way to look at gas pressure. So here we have three samples of gases, A, B, and C. And this is a way to compare the pressure inside with the pressure outside. So looking here, we have um, the level is lower on this side than this side. Here they're equal. Well, they're supposed to be equal. And here it's higher on this side than this side. So the liquid in the, the level of the liquid in that U-tube changes. So as we're looking at this, which sample, A, B, or C, has a gas of highest pressure? And how can you tell that it's higher? It's pushing more in that column of, it's probably mercury or some liquid in here. So A has the highest pressure, and the lowest then would be the opposite of that. It would be this example where the pressure here is greater and pushing it over on that side. Uh, the pressure here is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere here. Okay, here's a demonstration of what can happen with pressure. Um, notice the Bunsen burner is on here and it's off here. So as I'm heating up this gas within this can, it is sealed. When the particles are hot, they move around more. When the particles cool down, they slow down and the pressure drops. Okay, the pressure in the can drops it's no longer equal to the pressure of the atmosphere. In fact, the pressure of the atmosphere would be greater than the pressure of the gas, causing the pressure from the outside to make that can collapse. These units are conversions for pressure, are units that we'll use quite a bit, and we're going to do some conversions here. So 50.8 kilopascals, we want to convert that to millimeters of mercury. And all that you do is you just use the conversion factor. So we want kilopascals to cancel. We want millimeters of mercury. So it's 760, and the conversion for kPa is 101.3. So we would divide, I'm sorry, multiply 50.8 times 760 
divided by 101.3, and we get 381. This is all about the same difficulty, these conversions. And these, I believe, are listed on your packet also. So atmospheres, it's one atmosphere, 760 tor. And so 0 0.85 times 760 is 646. The last one to PSI. Now PSI is something that's pounds per square inch. It should probably be written that way. It's really pounds per inch squared, but PSI is a common acronym that's used outside of this classroom. And this is 17.7, .7, or 17.2, excuse me. All right, finally, in this chapter, we will have a bunch of different variables, and you need to be familiar with the letters that are used for each. So we'll have P for pressure, V for volume, T for temperature, and notice that it must be in kelvins. And then N is going to represent the number of moles of gas.